Welcome to the fourth webinar of Women in Copernicus and particularly to the one dedicated to women in aerospace. Today we'll be discussing uh, the bigger picture of how to create an aerospace sector with an inclusive representation. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, there are many in this call and that's nice. Uh, my name is Natasha Donio and I work for ERSC, the European Association of Remote Sensing Companies as Market Development Officer. But I'm also very happy to be part of the core team of Women in Copernicus, the organizers of this uh, series of very interesting webinars on how to bridge GI and space initiatives to foster gender balance. Before I introduce you to our special guest, I would like to invite you all to, if you have questions, uh, please use the chat. And, and at the end, uh, you will take the floor. And uh, obviously you have already done it, mute yourself. Uh, but at the end, it would be nice if you can all unmute your microphones and we can have together a casual discussion. Obviously feel free to have the camera on if you wish, uh, because that will create more better interaction. So with, uh, without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to our special guests, two wonderful uh, space ladies, uh, uh, Sweetie Pate and Stella Alexandrova. They are both uh, part of Women in Women in Aerospace uh, Europe, uh, which is an association founded uh, back in 2009, which is trying really to increase the leadership capabilities and visibility of women in the aerospace sector. Obviously, due to their residence, I would say they are both part of the Brussels local group, where I also belong, and this is how we know each other. Uh, it's a small community, so we are all friends at the end of the day. So um, I would like first to give the floor to Sweetie to take one, two minutes to briefly introduce herself. I could do it. I have her bio, but it's better if she does it by herself. Sweetie. Okay, definitely. So uh, I'm Sweetie Pate and I'm coming from, uh, originally I'm from India and um, I'm now working in Belgium from around three and a half years. Uh, I, I'm working in, in a space industry here uh, called Kinetic as a satellite operation systems engineer. Um, I, uh, I have a background in space systems engineering. I studied at TU Delft in Netherlands, uh, which is one of the famous universities for aerospace engineering. Uh, I was doing my master thesis in uh, Thales Alenia space. Um, and um, also worked at German Aerospace Center for a period of one year. I'm uh, voluntary working for different organizations as well. I'm the technical committee member for AIAA Space Operations and Support uh, Committee. Uh, I'm um, also leading women in aerospace from Belgium, uh, which, is, which is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I'm uh, also working for uh, Space Generation Advisory Council, which is, uh, which is a small team here also in Belgium. And um, there are several other things, like I'm also the co national coordinator for uh, NASA JPL competitions for students in Belgium and um, representing Belgium. So uh, working on uh, promoting STEM among the students, that's, uh, that's also one of the common goals for uh, VIA. And, uh, I'm happy to present about we are here. Looking Good. forward to it. Thank you so much, sweetie. We are very happy to have you on board. And Stella, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Stella, and I work as a project manager at Kinetic Space. Actually, I've been always a space geek, and I've been very passionate about commercialization of space technologies. And in my free time, I write articles, books, publish webinars about the importance of commercialization of space technologies. In the STEM environment, I'm also part of the jury for the Space Tube Festival, a Belgium STEM educational festival for kids from nine to 18 years old old to actually make videos about space. So thank you, Natasha, for inviting me to speak during uh, this webinar. No, thank you both for being here. You're definitely, you know, great role models for us. And we are really looking forward to hear more about your experience. So um, now, I mean, uh, Sweetie already mentioned, you know, the Brussels group. Uh, and I want to focus on that because, you know, it has been active for a few years now. But in the past few months, it has been really revived because of Sweetie, and she's the she's the leader. So I will start the discussion with her. I would like her to tell us a few things about about women in aerospace in general, and particularly about her experience in the Brussels group, 
Then Stella will tell us her story and afterwards we'll go back to Sweetie to hear her personal story. So Sweetie, would you like to share your screen and, share, and tell us more about women in aerospace? Yeah, definitely. Thank so you. I'll share my screen. Um, okay, so I hope everybody can see my screen. Not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay, let me. Now, slowly, it's coming. Yes. Okay. Now it's there. That's amazing. So it's it's a great honor for me ac actually to uh, represent women in aerospace at this uh, forum, and um, let's let's move forward. <laughs> um, so v women in aerospace organization is it's actually a global network uh, that was founded in USA in 1985 with a clear goal of increasing the leadership capabilities and visibility of women in uh, aerospace community. Uh, Simonetta uh, Di Pepo and Claudia Klesser uh, founded Women in Aerospace Organization in Europe. So it was an extended version from uh, USA uh, in 2009. And I need no introduction for, for these ladies and uh, they all uh, have, you might have already heard about them. Uh, Simonetta, who, who is a director of Uni United Nations Office for uh, outer space uh, affairs uh, and Claudia, who is one of the uh, few female uh, leaders in European uh, space sector, uh, who is the founder of Astronautin and, uh, uh, and also, uh, which, is, which is actually a non-profitable uh, organization with the goal to fly first German female astronauts in, into space and uh, inspire girls in, in for STEM. So this group was actually formed by these amazing ladies. We actually uh, started this group. I mean, these two ladies started this group uh, in 2009 um, uh, with, uh, with just 30 members. And now we have more than 100, uh, more than 1,000 individual members, along with the corporate members and partners. I'll show that in the upcoming, flight, uh, upcoming slides. Uh, after VIA of uh, Euro formation, the network was further extended uh, in uh, Canada, Mexico, and now uh, there is also a division in uh, Costa Rica. So we, we have a pretty uh, wide network. So what, what is the vision of uh, VIA in general and uh, overall? So we envision a successful European, um, European aerospace sector uh, well, I'm now talking mostly about we are in Europe, so uh, we are, we are uh, focusing on uh, creating an, uh, uh, a sector which will be inclusive representation at all, all the levels. And our mission is to be uh, an active ambassador for the aerospace by providing a platform for uh, aerospace professionals to promote diversity and excellence. The network help the, uh, the network is also to help uh, aerospace professionals and their organizations to succeed. Our goal is to attract uh, next generation of women and men to work in the aerospace sector. Through And through this webinar, I would also like to inform the audience that the organization is uh, also for men because most of the people uh, get confused with because of the name. It's it's women in aerospace, but uh, without men, uh, the the goal of making a, a sector which is inclusive of representation will not be possible. So, we would highly encourage men also to join this organization and uh, see what what are the challenges uh, a woman have in in their careers, and you know, then we can together can build a, a better um, place to work together. So uh, moving to the next slide, which I was talking about uh, 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 the members that we have. And um, so we started with 30 members in 2009, and now we, have, we are a wet ne network of around 1,000 individual uh, members, 32 corporate members, and uh, 10 international partners, uh, and as well as 16 local groups across Europe. Uh, across Europe, we have uh, we have held uh, in past around 420 local events, 60 international events, and uh, also provided around 16 awards and 28 grants to recognize the work of the members and inspiring them to continue with their achievements and uh, further contribute to to the society and to the aerospace community. If you see in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, 
figure here that um, we have uh, members like all the big companies, you see ETHELS, even your European Space Agency, uh, Kinetic now joined in, which is my company. So uh, there are there are so many organizations and uh, companies who are joining the hands together in, in promoting uh, women in aerospace and uh, achieving the common goals. I would also like to uh, mention, which is really important to mention that uh, recently, um, as per the agreement between ISU, ISU is a university that everybody know, International Space University. Uh, we have an agreement with ISU that uh, any VIA member who applies for one of their programs and is accepted, uh, he or she is entitled to receive at least uh, a half scholarship to cover the program fees. So th that's that's one of the very important benefits. And you know that ISU has a great network. So there are several benefits that uh, members, uh, VIA members can also get uh, also access to the job uh, applications or the uh, because there are so many companies who are our members and uh, they, they post their job openings, a vacancy on, on the VIA website and members can easily access those uh, positions and get into the network to, to make their application move forward and reach to the right people in the company. So then uh, you can see in this, uh, in this figure or, or picture that we have 16 local groups and spread across Europe. Uh, we are now here in Brussels. <laughs> and uh, I would also like to uh, mention from this uh, webinar here that uh, although the names are associated to a city, uh, for example, Brussels or Madrid, it's, it's, it's very specific to the city, but, but we have members from across Belgium and it's not really Brussels, Brussels group. It's, it's Antwerp or it's, uh, it's Leiden and, and you know, everybody can join in and uh, join our group and uh, contribute and learn from it and you know, grow, the, grow with their careers uh, together with us. Next, I would like to uh, mention about um, that VIA has a great organizational structure. So we have a, a executive committee and board, uh, board of directors who are highly accomplished experts in the field of aerospace. Uh, Diana, who is uh, the regional uh, development manager, management manager uh, also takes care of all the local groups. So uh, we have a pretty good structure uh, also it, we are very easily accessible to each other. We have a nice WhatsApp group as well. Uh, it, maybe it, it, it's uh, nowadays everybody likes to have a group on WhatsApp or social media to re easily reach out to, to people we want to. So um, we have a nice structure where with Diana has started a WhatsApp group for all the local leaders and we have regular meetings to, to come up with our issues and sh uh, share the experiences. And those those are then tackled at the, at the level of uh, board um, and the new decisions or new policies are uh, taken into, uh, uh, you know, they are formulated in, within, the, within the organization to address all the issues that we have at the local level. Uh, then uh, uh, we have, uh, we also provides a lot of um, programs. Uh, so starting with the, uh, starting to mention about networking opportunities or uh, mentoring, uh, training lectures, um, uh, as well as uh, there are awards, uh, as I already mentioned, grants and awards to encourage and support the members. Maybe I can give you a, a more more uh, details thing in the in the next slide where you can see that um, networking within networking itself, we have uh, uh, we organize virtual events. Also, there are local. Um, virtual breakfast, we call, we call those events as breakfast, but it's, it's more about uh, getting together and sharing uh, the common uh, issues or um, the topics that we can discuss to, uh, uh, through these uh, uh, events. It's also the uh, industrial conferences where we, we invite the corporate members and um, uh, share about uh, their life in the industry and uh, encourage the new uh, young professionals to, to join into the, in those companies. So that's kind of a networking events we have. Then we have mentoring events or uh, mentoring that can be provided to, uh, between, uh, to, the, to the young professionals who want to learn from the expertise in the industries. There are trainings that are organized like workshops uh, as well as uh, um, basically to build uh, build the uh, 
to build the skills that are required to enter into certain industry. Uh, as the as we have a big network, we we can uh, we easily get access to the experts who can uh, who can uh, uh, train and organize the workshops. Uh, similarly, for for lectures, uh, we also have plans in for Brussels group as well. Uh, that coming months, we will be going to the universities for for the lectures and uh, informing the young professionals or the students to to join into the organization and getting to know getting them to know about the opportunities available in Belgium. Um, awards: there are, are several awards as well. Um, important to mention are the outstanding achievement awards uh, we gave it to the students um, well that's that's for uh, very highly accomplished people in in the uh, in the group and then we also have awards for students and young professionals awards which is uh, for for students and uh, engineering students uh, from aerospace sector uh, who can make use of this um, awards as well as there are grants where we we support the uh, people to to participate in the conferences and Currently, it's mostly virtual, but but before uh, there were a lot of conferences and uh, members used not were not able to go to the conferences just because of the funding problem. So VI is also supporting, uh, providing grants to people who who needs uh, such um, such support. Um, so as I, I already mentioned about, uh, we have the industrial webinars where we discuss, where we organize uh, events uh, together with the experts from the industry, uh, such as like a panel discussion. Tomorrow we have a very nice space policy event. Uh, <laughs> good to advertise it here. <laughs> and uh, so we, we have some uh, we have some amazing experts uh, from from the industry to talk about uh, space policies and how they can impact the space mission. Uh, so we, we regularly organize such kind of events, not only at Brussels, but at the global level uh, within all the 16 local groups, everybody is organizing some kind of events and uh, anybody can uh, access it from, from any part of the world. So it's mostly virtual. So a lot of people are uh, these days also joining and making best use of uh, VR as, as, a, uh, as a global network. Then students and young professional awards, as I already mentioned about. So um, uh, we have these three uh, outstanding awards in 2020: uh, Pascal A from uh, from DLR, uh, Grazia from Airbus, and Claudia from ESA. They received this uh, outstanding achievements award, who demonstrated a, dedica a dedication to the advancement of uh, women in aerospace and uh, exemplary uh, leadership qualities. So yeah, and what to mention also for the young professional Olympia, she also received uh, uh, this uh, young professional award um, in recent years. So what are, uh, well, uh, also it's very important to mention that we have now um, planned for uh, research activities within VIA. So uh, we're coming together uh, with the individual members as well as the universities who are there in Belgium or across uh, uh, the network of uh, VIA in Europe uh, and the corporate members to uh, write research papers or uh, um, articles which are based on uh, gender equalities and how we can bridge the gaps between between the uh, um, between genders uh, for for uh, uh, inclusive um, uh, aerospace sector. So there there are a lot of activities going on uh, right now. It's in in the pipeline, but uh, in coming months we'll be able to see that uh, coming uh, taking into uh, place, and a lot of members can take benefit of of this kind of publications and participate in the research activities. Uh, yeah, and then oh, uh, as I mentioned, the first logo, first picture is of the space policy event that we have tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so all the local groups uh, organize several events over the year, and uh, tomorrow the Brussels group have organized an uh, amazing event, as I mentioned. What to mention was also that uh, for the International Women's Day event, uh, there was uh, there was a global event between. Uh, via Canada, uh, via USA, and via Europe, and it was really amazing. I got the opportunity to even talk to uh, uh, Palema uh, Melroy, who is uh, the NASA astronaut and now the, the NASA deputy uh, administrator. So it, it's, it was really amazing uh, webinar uh, that was there on the International Women's Day organized by uh, VIA. So you get, you will, if you are a member and uh, 
if you want to join women in aerospace there are plenty of <laughs> plenty of uh, opportunities and events to interact and get to know people and they share their experiences and your experience with them um most important aspects um uh, of any any organization is the communication channel and how how we can reach to the community so uh, via is having a perfect um channel of uh, communication where we have linkedin facebook twitter and you can see that uh, the numbers of followers on on this social network is also increasing day by day uh, we have uh, quarterly uh, newsletters bi weekly digest uh, uh, and dedicated to uh, dedicated campaigns to uh, to inform the community about the activities that are done at women in aerospace there are uh, a website uh, there is a very nice website now uh, which is recently updated so we have all the all the news updates on the website we have the video recordings of the events and the presentations available on the youtube channel of the via there are local events and the virtual global events um as i already mentioned about the uh, also about the international uh, industry events uh, we recently have uh, uh, the like via berlin have recently started port podcast so people who follow space uh, activities and uh, they can they can just uh, follow this post uh, podcast as well uh, we have annual reports and uh, brochures and flyers that are printed every year and uh, distributed to the committee uh, community uh, newsletters social medias and events uh, so that's from the partner channels as well yeah the, i i'm repeating this the content again in this slide but definitely uh, we have uh, uh, it's important to note that uh, uh, we have newsletters uh, quarterly uh, which is accessible accessible to everyone even if they are members or not members uh, everybody can access this um, through the website and if even if they can uh, um, get email ex, uh, email updates uh, if they register for for emails notifications um, as well as uh, the by digest is a bi weekly um, mo module that you get as a member uh, mostly about the industrial news and the individual uh, stories um, opportunities uh, development opportunities um, uh, weekly events and initiatives that are uh, coming up for, for the month or um, are in the pipeline they get to know through this digest so that's that's a very uh, useful uh, content that we have uh, to inform uh, the members um next we also recently have also started um uh, providing a platform for all the individuals uh, who are enrolled into via they can uh, they can share their stories uh, saying what i'm working on uh, and it's it's uh, also shared on the website uh, and in the digest uh, presenting about the via members their personal stories and also their journey in uh, in aerospace sector that can be inspiring to all the other uh, members and um, also to the wider uh, aerospace community uh, uh we well uh, it's also important to mention that we uh, we it's it's a it's it's a paid membership for via and uh, definitely um, but there there are uh, like different levels platinum gold silver bronze and non profit i don't know if it's a good good opportunity to uh, promote this but uh, you can get back on the website and see see the options available for for your company or for you as a person now most important is about via brussels so <laughs> coming to coming to the um, to our city and um, talking about our history is very important uh, our group was also started by simonetta uh, who is also the founder of via uh, europe uh, and um, she she was uh, uh, leading the group for 2013 and then uh, federica and alice she took over the positions uh, for around um, for four to five years and and now from 2020 i'm actually uh, presenting via and and uh, i'm really uh, happy that i could lead <laughs> lead the group and things are falling into the place and yeah so maybe the next slide is very important to share that now we have a very nice core team uh formed in in brussels and uh, well nobody is in brussels but definitely as i said uh, we call it brussels group but it's it's a belgium um uh, grouped overall uh so uh, i'm leading the group and uh, maybe it's also important to show that 
uh, the the pictures are below everybody's uh, well the logos be below everybody's pictures will show their characteristics in the core team so as me uh, me as a leader uh, i'm i'm a person who who like to grow together and i i give platform for every member and the core team to express themselves in, in the organization and we value uh, their ideas and put forward to everybody like um one of the member the core member mari she is the youngest one and the most active person so she comes up with a lot of ideas and she's also i call her as a creative brain uh, we work in the same industry at kinetic as a satellite operations engineer and um uh, on the women's day we we launched a very nice video uh, and a lot of members took part in it and it it was really nice um also i i believe uh, in synergies so there are a lot of organizations within belgium who are working towards the common goals like women in copernicus and that's that's the reason that i'm there in this uh, webinar that i'm looking for synergies and see where we can uh, reach to common goals and achieve the common goals uh, through uh, through um, through the network and reach out a lot of people uh, also sdac i'm working with sdac and then also the isas um, ASRO program, which is for students uh, and school kids, uh, motivating them towards STEM, which is also one of the common goals for VIA. So that's that's kind of a vision that we have for for VIA Brussels. Uh, the next one is Martha, which is also from ISU, which is the famous uh, networking university or <laughs> in Europe and well in the world, I would say. Uh, she is uh, she is the person who is uh, in charge of the networking and uh, connecting the dots. and finding out people who who are relevant for the events and uh connecting with them and asking for events and um, so tomorrow's e event actually she found out the speakers and connected with them and and uh, now we have the best panel uh, available for tomorrow to address all the questions on space policies and nancy vermula she is a, she is i would say the expertise and she's also the founder of space academy uh, training she was uh she trains astronauts uh, and now she have released a book on her journey uh of uh, to to be an astronaut or um to towards the path to become an astronaut uh, her experiences in the book so oh, we have a diverse uh, team but everybody Indeed. is having their own own specialty and uh, i'm very lucky to to have such core team and you, you know that one person cannot do everything and if you don't have a good team uh, nothing fall, can fall into a play, uh, fall into uh, its right place so that's something Indeed. very important for for people who are uh, interested in brussels that now we have uh, a very good team good. uh maybe i would also like to share about um the work plan uh, i think i'm running out of time but uh, be, just yes to, <laughs> <laughs> just to uh, two more slides and uh, so we we have a work plan for 2021 which is um, uh, like i just marked today we are on this con uh, webinar but uh, upcoming things are the tomorrow space policy event and then we have also planned for the guest lectures um, in in june and also in october uh we, we are planning for industrial visit in redu in july and uh, also networking events in august and a christmas dinner event networking event in december so lot lot of lot of things are in the pipeline and you will see us uh, soon <laughs> so that's the last slide and you can contact us <laughs> Good. Uh, thank you so much, sweetie. And also here, you should mention obviously that you all work in a volunteering basis. So you yes. know you don't get paid. Obviously, there's some money to support the the organization, and but then you know everybody's working because they're passionate about their association and obviously about space. And if someone wants to become a member, there's a fee behind it because you know all these great initiatives they need to be supported with some uh, with some money. So yeah. obviously everybody can become part, uh, become member of women in in aerospace. Good, thank you so much, yeah. sweetie. We'll come back to you in in a second. Now I would like to give the floor to Stella, and with Stella we'll take a bit more more personal approach. I would like to know, I would like to ask her to tell us more about you know the space. Uh, the space uh, path she had so why have have she decided to work in the space sector in the first place and and also i'm very curious to know if she encountered any issues being a lady 
And then, you know, I would like to know, obviously, why she, why she joined women in aerospace and the benefits she, she got from the organization. So, um, should I share this, the screen for you, Stella? Yes, please. So, I would just, yes, if you could, that would be great. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it very well. So, okay, perfect. So, I started my space career with the networking university, the International Space University, actually, and also <laughs> finished it at TU Dow. But maybe we can start with the next slide. Yes. Uh, why I joined, I started working, I always wanted to be an astronaut or a cosmonaut. And uh, my passion about working in the space industry started with uh, ICU and particularly learning about the space industry and space business. Personally, I think that this is an industry which permits dreams to become true. It's very multidisciplinary and very inspirational industry. It's quite a difficult one to work in, but that is the interesting part because there are a lot of exciting challenges. It also is an industry which gives the opportunity to grow to learn to grow on a daily basis. And I think there are very few industries which give this opportunity. In addition, on a daily basis, every each of us working in the industry, we face a lot of R&D technology business challenges with our customers, with our suppliers, with the projects we manage, with our colleagues. So it's, it's very interesting. And third, you see a lot of opportunities uh, for disruptive innovation. So uh, you've probably recently watched the SpaceX launch. You've heard about Planet. You've heard a lot about new space companies. The industry is changing. So it's becoming more and more commercial and competitive driving forces are becoming more dominant. COTS elements are becoming important. Shorter lead times to fly payloads is becoming critical. So disruptive innovation is a area which is becoming more and more important in the industry and changing the ways not only commercial customers how they think but also institutional customers space agencies are also changing their view so uh, sometimes i have the feeling we live on the verge of a new space era or we have started living on the verge of a new space revolution so uh, this is one of the reasons why I think space industry is also very exciting. And finally, it's an industry which gives you the freedom to explore your ideas, to follow your dreams. So next slide, Natasha. So I'll share, I started my career uh, working. Uh, uh, so as I mentioned to you, I started with ICU, but also I worked on Galileo. And I also started working on the International Space Station at the time when there were no commercial payloads flown to the space station and the station was considered as a fully, fully institutional laboratory. However, uh, my passion to follow how to fly commercial payloads, how to have commercial utilization pushed me further to work in that domain. And now, as you can see, not only we have several commercial vehicles providing services to the space station, we will be having in the future the Gateway Station, a lunar station 1,500 kilometers around the moon, that on which there will be European, also astronauts, who will be there. And I encourage you, any of you girls and boys who are willing to apply, do please apply for this new opportunity which is for ESA astronauts. Next slide, if possible. So let me tell you a little bit also, one of my examples of a lady who is very, very successful in the space industry is Megan MacArthur. Uh, 10 years ago, I had the opportunity to meet her when I went to Houston. 
And uh, she is a unique astronaut, but she was also, her first mission was on the Hubble, on the third Hubble telescope repair in 2009. So she had to be part of an eight hour EVA to repair the Hubble telescope. Just now, a few days ago on the 23rd, I think of April, she flew on the Crew Dragon, on the SpaceX Crew Dragon as a pilot. She's also a mother and a wife of another astronaut who was the first one on the Space X Crew Dragon. And uh, she is someone who is very inspirational and she's always been quite of an example for me, demonstrating that uh, you could be always a, a good mom and an astronaut at the same time and following your dreams with quite challenging missions, having in mind the Hubble telescope and the one with the SpaceX Crew Dragon. Good. So Good. next slide. So I've been a member of Women in Aerospace from the early days of the organization, the very, very early days, starting with the Leiden organization as I used to live in the Netherlands where I did my PhD at QDOFT. Uh, and uh, I, I know Barbara in, from the Netherlands and I, I have a lot of friends who are members of the Women in Aerospace actually also in the Netherlands, in the, <laughs> the Netherlands group. What I like about it and the reason it is that there is a community of like-minded friends and colleagues and you're very free to share your knowledge. So for example, uh, three years ago, I published a book called Emerging Space Markets about the new space industry trends with Springer. And Women in Aerospace was the association which invited me to share my presentation and knowledge. Also, it's a platform where you can share your passion. You can freely exchange ideas and also share network. Uh, if there are a lot of opportunities, especially in the Brussels group, where uh, often there were events created and continue to be created now virtual, but before in life, where we talked, we networked, we discussed. But mainly for me, Women in Aerospace is a platform where it's an opportunity to learn to learn new things uh, and also to create a support network of a like-minded uh, colleagues and friends. And just in conclusion, maybe Natasha, if yes. you can, yeah, just always follow your mm -hmm. dreams, never stop believing in yourself and never give up, even if it looks impossible. So many years ago, when I started my career in the space industry, there were much more or less women working and they were mainly in administrative positions. So I had a situation where I was told, not only you're a woman, but you also Bulgarian, how dare you make this type of research and study? How dare you even dream to do that? Well, I, I, can, I kind of, I did, didn't let this put me down and actually quite a lot motivated me. I'm glad to see that the industry for the last 10, 15 years has started to change and more ladies are finding the strength and uh, to be part of uh, the industry and actually making a big impact. So thank you very much for your attention. No, thank you, Stella. It's, uh, it's beautiful, your story. And obviously, you know, what you have said fits perfectly with uh, the survey we have been doing in uh, Women in Copernicus. Like we have seen that, you know, role models are very important. And like you've mentioned, you know, your favorite husband who really impacted your life. Obviously, you know, you are, I mean, you gave us a positive uh, aspect of the, of the space sector because, you know, we, we've, we've noticed that there are many issues being and women in the in, in Copernicus and also you know, in aerospace. But uh, your example is, is great, as you said, never give up. And when someone says something bad to you, you only get starborn and you become better and better. So you're, you're another great example and role model to follow. So now I would really like to go back to Sweetie because I do know that she has uh, another interesting personal story to share. 
Uh, she comes from, from India and she had a long path. She has been traveling around the world. So would you like to tell us more like, again, the, to give us the personal touch of your journey and, and obviously how women in aerospace change your life being here or being in Europe in general and how it has uh, influenced a bit your professional career and also the future. Yeah, definitely. So maybe maybe I will be sharing uh, some pictures of me. Maybe uh, that's um, that's a starting point to show because I haven't made any specific slide. Just put on some pictures no, of pictures my are, journey. Are great. The no, pictures yeah. are really good. So well, on my journey, I, I, as a child, I was I always fascinated about space objects and you know flying robots. Uh, like every child, I, I was also thinking about, are there aliens and is there a life on other planets? So how we can reach there and if so, how? So those were many, uh, one of some, like all questions in my mind and uh, my family inspired me that I can, I, I, and that I decided to follow my passion for a, a aerospace science and technology. So uh, in 2000 and uh, 2009, uh, I enrolled in aerospace engineering uh, in, uh, in India and uh, right from the first year of engineering, uh, I actively participated in several projects at the university, like building rockets, sounding rockets, and uh, water rockets, RC gliders, and spent most of my time in, in the aerospace hangar. This is the picture that I'm uh, showing you is from NASA uh, Langley. Um, that's something which actually motivated me to join uh, aerospace and the space sector itself. I uh, during my undergrad, I participated in eco-friendly aircraft design challenge organized by NASA, and uh, I backed third rank all over the world uh, and also got an opportunity to uh, visit NASA Langley and present the award-winning design there, uh, which was, I, I would say, um, at NASA, I also got the opportunity to uh, visit the research labs and interact with the NASA scientists. And that was uh, some kind of a turning point for, for me. Uh, it was amazing that how people uh, respect um, young talent and uh, irrespective of the age and background. So it was very inspiring for me. The journey was very inspiring. And I, uh, when I came back to uh, India, I decided that I will stick to this field and uh, uh, I'll try my best in space <laughs> space journey. So uh, uh, and now you see that uh, with the years, like a couple of years now, I moved to moved to Germany and uh, worked at German Aerospace Center and uh, uh, at Tudelf. I did my master's and it has been a long journey, of course, from India to to Europe. Uh, but uh, definitely space is uh, having a lot of opportunities and uh, now with the ambitious people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, I think the future is more interesting for all the young professionals, the students who are now enrolled in aerospace engineering, that there are a lot of opportunities for uh, everyone. So maybe uh, talking about uh, the question that you mentioned, uh, why did I join uh, VIA and uh, decided uh, to be a uh, president or for or um, lead Brussels group. I think the story is very uh, interesting as well. So maybe I can just quickly change the uh, picture. So well, I can also show some pictures that I have from German Aerospace Center, and I, I was a part of a rocket team here in Tudelf. So um, the picture uh, picture on the right side is the being an uh, analog astronaut in, in a program uh, in Poland. So some cool pictures here. And now I'm an operations engineer at Kinetic. Uh, so the next slide that I would like to talk uh, is about a story for my uh, Brussels chapter and why I joined um, Brussels chapter. Um, so uh, I, I was at, at the conference at IAC in Bremen, and uh, there I got the opportunity to um, attend the presentations from VIA. That by that time I was not knowing about such organization, but uh, but after listening to this uh, presentation, I was highly inspired by the vision of the organization, and I thought that uh, with this platform I can make a major contribution to the aerospace community. Uh, I'm, I would also like to mention that these pictures I'm trying to show you are, are uh, to try to. Uh, 
say that I'm very active in India as well. I visit a lot of schools and colleges uh, to share my experiences with the students and guide them in the career choices. Uh, here are some of the cool pictures. Um, one of the best one is the right side picture. There's a school uh, in my hometown where they have painted uh, uh, my picture uh, on the school wall uh, just next to the Indian astronaut, a uh, late uh, astronaut, uh, Kalpana Chawla. So, um, at that conference uh, at IAC, I, I, I thought that this is the right opportunity for me and you know, a right platform to reach out a lot of people and uh, make a major impact. Uh, and in the conference, I also got to know about the vacancy for this position. And then without a second thought, I applied for this position. And uh, luckily, my application was <laughs> also accepted. So uh, as you know, Brussels is the heart of the European Union and um, is the hub of aerospace policies. Uh, this is the ideal location for, uh, for, to contribute for the organizations um, by increasing the leadership capabilities and also give a visibility of uh, women in the aerospace community. Um, and I took the charge, as I already mentioned, in 2019 and 20. And, um, and now we have reorganized the group completely. I'm uh, uh, collaborating with a lot of organizations and just working in a different way, uh, trying to uh, bring uh, all, all the ideas uh, from, from all the members on, on one single plate and uh, giving, uh, try to give and, uh, a lot of opportunities to everyone and uh, promoting uh, STEM and uh, inspiring the young generations. Um, in June also, I have a lecture in, in a school uh, here in Belgium. It's an international school of Belgium where I will be uh, going to um, give some inspirational talk, maybe just about my journey in, in, in aerospace sector. And uh, I think I, I like to do this uh, on a voluntary base. Definitely nobody is paying me for this, but I, I definitely enjoy in sharing my experiences such that the people or the students who are following now uh, aerospace sector, they, they, they will have a, a smooth uh, trajectory as, um, as compared to me. Good. Thank you so much, sweetie. Yeah. And also, yeah. we are very happy that uh, we have also started collaborating with women in Copernicus. Mm -hmm. So we are, you know, it's um, it's it's a great pleasure. Uh, I see the time running. It has yeah. been a very interesting discussion, and that was the problem. You know, we lost track because you both share interesting stories. Mm -hmm. I would like to open the floor now for questions, particularly to Stella, because she needs to leave in five minutes. So if, uh, if someone has uh, something to ask to Stella, please uh, be, be our guest. Because I see here one about Sweetie, but um, yeah, I really want to encourage questions to Stella. Anybody from the others? And of course, that's the moment where I'm asking everybody to open your microphones, open your cameras, because that's not only you know, me talking with the ladies, uh, but it's all together talking and exchanging. I see one question, whether yes. I've considered changing. I did this, actually, <laughs> but I went to the aviation industry. Uh, uh, I worked for three years in uh, ATM in research for air traffic management as a uh, project manager. Uh, and uh, I missed so, so much working in the space industry. So, but it was an excellent opportunity for me actually to uh, follow up on my project and to, to improve my project management skills. So my project management career started from another industry rather than the space one, let's say. That's that's good. You are learning. You take the good things and you move them from one side exactly, to the other. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, since I have to admit that when I left the industry, uh, the aviation industry, when I worked there, I was missing a lot the space industry, and I didn't stop uh, publishing articles, books, webinars. So I continued my activities and my network. So. I, I was uh, continuing to do it, so. Yeah, I think nobody can escape from the space sector. Somehow, exactly. you know, is this exactly. black hole where it absorbs everybody and we love being a part of it. Thank you, Mirko, for your question. Any, oh, yeah, thanks. Anybody else? 
No, because I, I do have a question for Stella, but okay. that's, you know, more linked to, you know, to my personal uh, position. You know, you've mentioned that, you know, these, the astronaut, the woman has been uh, inspired you because she's a mother and, exactly. she, you know, you can do everything, even being a mother. So in your case, being a mother of two, how, how, how are you managing? And because I do know that you are very active, you are writing books, you are publishing, you are presenting. So how, yeah, how do you do it? Well, uh, I think one of the major things is multitasking for pa parents. I think <laughs> every parent goes through that. Uh, I have to admit that having two kids makes you even more efficient than before. It improves your, uh, you become quite dynamic. Uh, I have been very lucky because I've been encouraging, especially my bigger daughter, who is eight and a half to become a space geek let's say so space she's girl. following <laughs> she, we watched the launch of Thomas Pasquier and so on uh, it is not easy but uh, it's it's an honor and let me say to all the girls who are you know working in the space industry and considering a space career you should actually not sacrifice your personal family life for having a space career. So it's possible to have both of them. As soon as uh, you, you know, sometimes it's challenging, you have less sleepless nights. There will be not so many people who will understand you, but also that is why it's good that we're part in a community as women in aerospace in Copernicus, because you can always talk to like-minded people and friends and colleagues exactly. who will, who can reassure you that it is possible. So I have a lot of friends, girls, engineers working for companies like Thales, uh, TNO or Airbus, or also working at ESA who are moms of two and three kids and they're very successful. So it shouldn't, uh, you know, one shouldn't be sacrificed for the other. That, that's, that's good to know because, you know, you are, by default you're struggling by nature. So, and, and then last question, because I really do know that you have to, to rush. Uh, how, how, do you, how are you growing your two space girls? Because I do know that they're ready space girls to be competent and ready for the future. Oh, this is a very good question. Yes, well, uh, to put a lot of, um, the big one, to, to put a lot of emphasis on science, math and English. <laughs> so she's, uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she loves mathematics, so that's really good. Uh, the young one, uh, and uh, we check out regularly my telescope, so that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And the young one is uh, basically for now, she's just having, she's too young, I think, still to be brainwashed, but uh, it will come, so. I see Luisella raising her hand, so maybe she wants to ask you okay. something directly. Good afternoon. No, I wait for for uh, for Stella. Ah, to hello, finish. hello. <laughs> Hi. Nice, nice to see you. <laughs> uh, well, essentially, I want to thank you all because it's fantastic. Uh, what the story of sweeties uh, and, and her dedication to women in aerospace, Stella, and thank you, Natasha, for uh, for uh, organizing uh, this webinar. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think obviously. this is uh, the start of a great collaboration. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm working in Copernicus, be besides being uh, the president of Women in Aerospace, <laughs> I'm also a system manager in Copernicus at ESA. So for me, it's kind of natural to to be working with. Uh, with, with you all. To be part of Women in Copernicus too. So yeah. yes, very. we are very happy to have you here and thank you for joining the webinar. Thank you. So, uh, uh, thanks, Sweetie, very much for your presentation of, uh, of the association. Yes, it was very good. Thank you. And, and now we, I mean, we can go back to Sweetie. I've seen here someone says already uh, joined one of your seminars. So you have been inspiring a lot. Uh, young people from your country, but I'm sure worthwhile. And um, would you like I will to share? Have to go. Yes. Bye, Stella. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. So, um, do you do you want to say something more, or, or for example, I I, will, I really want to know from your experience when women are are joining the women in aerospace, mm -hmm. what are they looking for? What are their problems or issues, and how do they find comfort in in the association? 
Definitely. This this is the question that a um, lot of people want to uh, also ask and understand. So uh, as, as I mentioned in my presentation as well, uh, it's the networking that's very important uh, for finding a job in, in the aerospace sector. So that's one of the thing that uh, mostly people want to join in the in such organization where people are uh, from different areas and you can reach out to uh, you know op op opportunities across the, across Europe as well as for mentors because there are a lot of expertise available in the group uh, who can share their experiences and uh, you can follow a, a mentor who is just few steps ahead from you and you can follow their trajectory and uh, career trajectory and learn from their experiences. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm trying to encourage Yes, Stefan, nice to have you here. Nice to have a few men here. Hello, great. Hi. Um, so first of all, congratulations. This was really very inspiring what I was now listening to because, um, well, it's not, it was not too much complaining about the situation. It no, was exactly. <laughs> very proactive um, and, and yeah, that's, that's leadership, yeah. Um, so what I'm interested in, um, where do you see the changes coming up? Maybe in the in the mindset of of well, the society. You know, it's it's really interesting that this um, trend now, um, yeah, activating more women in this, you know, the STEM and, and all these related technical fields, is somehow coinciding with what was previously explained. This, you know, the commercialization of space, um, new space, um, space two zero or three zero or whatever, uh, <laughs> make it more competitive. You know, how does that fit together? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering. And, you know, engineering made by women. So I, I don't know. So what's, what's new? You know, what's new? How, how, how are new solutions coming up with this new trend? You know, it's not just filling gaps and, and having gender balances. And so I think there is a, an opportunity in that, not only in the space sector, but also with approaching climate change, you know, the big challenges in the world. How, how do you think that this, this new balance can actually come uh, or, or generate new solutions, new way of thinking, maybe something that has never been thought before? Yeah. Definitely, I think, uh lot of people um like uh, if you even if you think about the human tendency if two brains are working from a different uh, thinking about the topic in a different aspects and uh, different perspectives they have different ideas and i think uh having this gender balance or uh, uh, inclusiveness i would say to in any industry not only in aerospace sector but also in all the domains of engineering or uh, medical field or whatever. So uh, uh, if you think about uh, about the issues uh, from a different angle, then I think there will be solutions and uh, we can uh, come up with the solutions for all the problems. Um, or uh, I would not say that as a problem, but definitely uh, the way um, everybody thinks about the challenges are in a different way, uh, maybe men who, who they are not aware of the challenges that uh, a lady is going through in, in their career uh, journey. So uh, having that inclusiveness uh, or having such kind of platform like women in aerospace or women in Copernicus, uh, men can understand or uh, everybody um, can understand the upcoming issues and the challenges that uh, each other face in, in their career trajectory and learn from each other's experiences. And that that's I, I think that's the common goal for all the organizations. And that's why I also talk about the synergies because there are a lot of organization and we are not in a race of um, uh, competing with other organizations, but we are uh, trying to promote the same goal definitely learning from each other and uh, uh, reaching out to the uh, wider community. Good. Thank you so much, sweetie. Indeed. Uh, I will take one last question because we are we arrived to four sharp. So anybody else? Do you want to take the floor? Do you want to say something? I see everybody's uh, is very quiet. Uh, of Oh no, Mirko, please. Yeah, uh, just a general question. I was uh, really happy to follow what you say today. And um, as an initiative, I would like to understand if I need uh, the permission of the association to spread the word. I mean, because as I'm working for the Veneto region of Brussels office, 
uh, I was thinking to use our newsletters or, or um, channel we have to communicate to the territory. So it can be also, uh, no, I hope a lot of women will read that. So it could be nice to, to make them understand that there is uh, new opportunities in the um, space world, space careers. Uh, so just uh, just to know if in that case you want to check what we will send or if it's this kind of uh, uh, meetings is open to everybody. So yeah, Sridhi, go and then I'll, I'll reply on behalf of women. No, I was Copernicus. just saying that that's good, good information and uh, would like to have the collaboration there also from women in aerospace side and um, make best use of this uh, communication letters. Yeah, and if I can add, like, uh, we are more than happy if you can disseminate all these initiatives, you know, because we are all trying to work together. There are so many yeah. things going on. For example, women in Copernicus, we have launched this series of webinars that they are taking place every Wednesday. So the next yeah. one actually is happening uh, next, uh, next Wednesday, as I said, on 5th of May, and it's about uh, women in geospatial. So obviously there will be, you know, many interesting activities from now onwards. So you can always follow us on social media, uh, both women in aerospace and women in Copernicus. And anytime you have any question, don't hesitate to come directly to us. And who knows in the future, we might also organize something more local with your support, because you know, the more we spread the words about about um, the issue, about how we can all work together, how we can support women in space sector and and uh, and empower young generation, that will be better for everybody. Yes. So great. So yes, good. So I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I personally did it a lot. Uh, but okay, maybe I'm a bit biased. I would like to thank a lot Sweetie and Stella who left us and obviously Barbara for her great job of putting this uh, series of webinars together. And, uh, and then of course the beautiful women in Copernicus team for working so nicely together in a volunteer basis. So thank you very much. Have a good afternoon.